911. What's your emergency? There's been a massive landslide on Highway 530. My neighbor's house and their neighbor's house has been completely taken out and they're trapped. There's like a mudslide and everything's gone. The houses are gone. I'm on a steep post road on Highway 530. Are there any injuries? Yes, there's people yelling for help. There's so many they people been, yelling for they, help. They've been dispatched, okay? What happened? Can you tell us what happened? This is a major slide here. They need additional resources. All the homes and steal a drive are gone. You can't fathom of why did it have to happen? Why did it have to happen when it happened? Why did it have to happen right here? Oso is just a, a small, you know, for most people, a blip on the map. Less than a thousand people. You have a view of, of mountains on, on, you know, kind of either side of the valley. Who wouldn't want to live in a place like this? Which is why this was a little slice of paradise on earth when, when the community was here. This was a community called Steelhead Haven, March 22nd at 10.37 a.m. in 2014. The hill catastrophically failed and came down and took out the community and we lost 43 of our, of our neighbors and our friends and our family and uh, 11 uh, survived and were rescued. I was the first responding chaplain and support officer, stayed here and was active and participated for the next 38 days, helping out as a frontline chaplain, helping with recoveries, knee deep, waist deep in mud. How can we bring all of our family members, all of our loved ones home? I hung on to my faith a lot. There was a verse that came up very early. It's, it's found in Psalms. It says, Lord, sustain me as you promised. Don't let my hope be crushed. This memorial was birthed out of that idea to, to bring hope to a situation that's otherwise was pretty hopeless at the time. Western Washington, it's landslide country. I mean, we have a, a geological setup here for landslides to be an integral part of just how our landscape works. It was not a surprise that there was a landslide there. Uh, what was surprising is how far it went, how fast. And I'd driven that road um, you know, out to Darrington many times before the Oso landslide. And I'd never imagined the far hillside actually coming all the way across the road, let alone as fast as it did. In studying this landslide, there's real evidence that it was the latest in the whole set of dominoes, you know, a whole set of landslides that, that date back hundreds if not thousands of years in that area. If we really want to understand not just the hazard of where things might happen, but the risk of how likely they are to happen, we need to understand what's triggered these kind of slides in the past. Today we are going to be flying drones over the Oso landslide and collecting imagery and LiDAR data to create a 3D model of the landslide. And we're going to use that 3D model and compare it to previous 3D models and look at change detection. See, is the landslide moving? How is the, the landslide aging over time? Once the landslide occurred, there was a large landslide mapping effort and I identified a number of historical landslides around here that might have been useful information to know to understand what the risk was before something like this happened. This is the 10 year anniversary of the Oso landslide. It's a unique case because we know exactly when the landslide occurred and it was a larger landslide which they can compare to some of the historical land, larger landslides that are out there. They can then decide what landslide risk might look like in other areas that haven't had giant slides like this before. There's been a really major league effort that, that's done a great job so far of mapping slides in the state of Washington using that LIDAR data. But there's sort of an additional need in thinking about trying to convey the potential risks to people downslope of those areas and to really try and assess how to predict where slides may end up. The challenge is trying to figure out you know, how frequently do they occur, how fast may they go, how dangerous may they be, and not just mapping where they are now, but where they'll end up. One of the things that I haven't seen a lot of progress on in Washington since 2014 is the better identification of potential landslide runout zones and conveying that into things like zoning and public awareness. 
the risks in the North Fork Stilly Valley are much better understood now than they were 10 years ago, but there's still a lot to be understood about landslide risks around the state. 10 years later, I, I think that I still have a gamut of emotions. You know, the, there's, there's sadness, there's, there's the pain, uh, the sting of loss that we experience in this community. If there are any signs of something like this happening, if, if, there, if there can be any warning, that I hope people heed those warnings. We want people to understand what this community was and who lived here and, and to tell the story. In the midst of this tragedy, here is a place that people can come and reflect and process. A place that just shows the resiliency of this community.